Welcome to The Real Deal with Jason Silverman, the podcast dedicated to helping you build the business of your dreams and live the life you always hoped for, with valuable and fun tips and info to make your life easier and more fun. And now, here's your host, a man who sprinkles metal shavings on his breakfast cereal just for fun, Jason Silverman. Everybody and welcome to The Real Deal, Jason Silverman. I'm your host, Jason Silverman, and I'm thrilled to share some time with you once again today. As you know, I'm always on the hunt for interesting as well as super smart Real Deal guests, and i got to tell you, today's show is a winner. I want to introduce my listeners to somebody who's truly been there and done that, and I'm really excited to pick his brain for your benefit today. Now, for the folks who I work with in any of my coaching programs, or through Powerful Words, Character Development, All-Star Cheer Sites, or the Jason's Army Mastermind Group, You know how much I focus on effective marketing strategy, right? Well, this show is going to help us to do just that. So today it's going to be my honor and privilege to share an amazing resource with you. You're going to love today's guest. He's got a ton of valuable information about what I consider to be one of those keystones between kind of making it and smashing that ball out of the park. So I want you to strap yourself in. Today's show is going to be a blast. As I'm sure you already know, I'm committed to helping business owners just like you to become more successful, enjoy your career more, and in general, make your life significantly more fun. Let's face it, folks, we only get one ride on this merry-go-round. Let's make sure it's one hell of a ride, shall we? Alrighty, boys and girls, it is now that time. I want you to stop surfing Facebook, put away your phone, your tablet, your dog, your cat, your spouse, your child, anything that might possibly distract you from today's show. You're about to get some great and immediately implementable information, and I don't want you to miss even a second of it. So, before we officially get going, let me give you a little bit of background about our special guest expert today. Jeffrey Colon is a voice at the intersection of marketing, tech, and popular culture. Thinking is his commodity. DJ, data punk, podcaster, and author, Jeffrey is a communications designer at Microsoft in Redmond, Washington for Microsoft Search Advertising, otherwise known as Bing. He's an author of the 2016 book, Disruptive Marketing, What Growth Hackers, Data Punks, and Other Hybrid Thinkers Can Teach Us About Navigating the New Normal. He's also the host of the Disruptive FM podcast. Jeffrey, welcome to The Real Deal. I'm thrilled to have you today. Hey, thanks for having me, Jason. Uh, The pleasure is mine. So listen, before we officially get started, for those who haven't had the opportunity of reading your book or hearing your podcast, take a second, share your story with my listeners. What are you passionate about? What makes you tick? Who is Jeffrey Colon? You know, people are probably what make me tick the most. I mean, I love meeting lots of different types of people because the wonderful thing about it is we all learn from each other. Uh, We learn from other people's experiences. We learn from uh, other people's backgrounds. Um, You know, everyone's personal story is different because everyone grows up in a different environment uh, has different parents, has different friends, different technology. So, you know, people passion or passion for people is, is really important for me, especially in a world that's just overwhelmingly becoming much more digital and automated and, and robotic in some res- respects. It's, uh, it's good to, you know, connect with people, um, have chats with them, have discussions, Uh, I think also music is a big passion of mine. It has been for, uh, you know, for much of my life. My mother played the piano. My dad was really into jazz music. Um, You know, I DJed for a really, really long time in my uh, uh, career. had a small business that I ran. And, uh, you know, so music, I think, is a universal language that also connects everyone. Um, You know, you could speak Italian or Portuguese or, um, or, or Hindi, and I could speak English, and, and music is still that universal binding language. So I, 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 uh, I, I think that's a big uh, passion of mine that's you know, never going to go away. I love it. I absolutely love it. So I want to dive in because there, there's so much I want to ask you. Um, tell me this, you know, just as far as starting this out, what's the definition of disruptive marketing? And, and quite honestly, like, who's using it? Yeah, so the big players using disruptive marketing are startups and uh, a lot of small businesses. And the reason why they use it, Jason, is because um, it is using um, creative destruction and creative ideas that don't cost a lot 
that understand who your core audience is to reach them and build almost a collaborative culture together. Uh, there are certain industries or certain companies that people are very passionate about. Um, while big companies can use it, I think they have a much harder time implementing it because they move a lot slower. So startups and small businesses have, have definitely used it to their advantage. You know, whether it's to gain attention or to, you know, gain a specific audience that uh, helps them sustain their business. Uh, it's almost like shock value in some respects, you know, for people who've uh, ever been into street art or graffiti uh, since, you know, most of my life was spent in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, that was a way to storytell because you're grabbing people's attention by basically creating art in a space that is technically illegal. Um, that is, you know, really what I try to get at um, uh, with disruptive marketing. And, and I try to talk to a lot of people on why they should use it. I mean, we really live in an attention economy now. Uh, we barely have uh, much attention because of devices and multitasking and sort of the future shock of living. Uh, and this is uh, really a way to, to get attention and, and gain relevance, which is a huge barometer of how you actually build a business uh, in this day and age. Uh, it's great to say, hey, I want to put X amount of dollars toward this and I hope to get a return. But you have to be relevant to a certain core of customers who actually are going to become paying customers, which allows you to sustain you know, a livelihood uh, in the here and now. I totally get that. Yeah, just as an example, can you, can you come up with, um, there must be somebody or some firm that you're thinking of, um, just to kind of paint the picture for folks of somebody that you've seen effectively um, implementing you know, a disruptive marketing campaign. Yeah, I mean, I think probably the best example um, is, uh, you know, what Uber and Lyft have done. I mean, they have drastically changed how we have gone about transporting ourselves in urban areas. Uh, you know, for much of my life, it was not, uh, uh, you know, you would go out and, and raise your hand and hail a yellow taxi cab. Uh, you know, that's now like almost the last thing that we think of in most urban areas because we use an application to... Uh, use ride sharing services um, that has really you know created new behaviors and I think um, one of the other areas or one of the other businesses is actually a local business here in Seattle called Zeke's Pizza and I talked to a lot of actual um, you know pizza owners or pizza shop owners around the world and I say if your phone is ringing too much you're actually doing it wrong and they're like well what are you talking about you know the the phone is my lifeblood to business and I'm like yes but people want to be able to actually order you know using their mobile phone now so you have to think about how you can actually do that for them and, and Zeke's actually has a great mobile site that remembers your historical orders so if you're like me and you order the same thing every Friday it knows exactly what you you've ordered and you can pick from that menu and then it deploys and gets that order out to you in a matter of, a, of, of half an hour. That's very disruptive because we don't think about ordering pizza that way. We still think of, hey, call the number, talk to the person, give them your order, and then they show up and you pay cash. But now, you know, we're in a world now where it's like I barely use cash and a lot of younger people barely carry it, Jason. So we have to think about how customers behave, how people behave, what makes them tick, and really draw our marketing back to what they're you know, behaviors are that, uh, you know, people might not say that's disruptive per se, but it really is because you're not trying to market things based on what you want. You're trying to market based on what people want. And that's really a way to reverse engineer and grow business, um, you know, sort of in the modern age. I love that. That, that actually makes so much more sense. <laughs> it's versus, uh, I mean, I've heard so many people say, oh, you know, build it and I'll come. But yes rather going for the fact that this is what they want, let's, let's provide it. So, you know, I've heard you say that you think that brands talk too much. So what should they be doing if they're not marketing and advertising? You know, so one of the big things is listening. Uh, you know, one of the great things about local business is you can listen by uh, asking your customers questions every time they set foot in your 
uh, physical re, you know store if you if you are running a business that has a physical location if you're running an online business you can still do the same thing by uh, you know asking people to uh, you know specifically tell you what they do not like about your business so I think it's uh, very authentic in this day and age to ask customers not what they like but what do they not like because it's much uh, you know it's much more difficult to get that from people because people will always tell you what they like or love about you jason you know it's very easy for me to say to those who i'm close with oh this is what i love about you it's very difficult to say ah this is where you could improve but that's what business needs to hear so they actually can tailor that experience and make it better for people i think you know we've always looked at uh negative feedback as a negative, and we should actually look that look at that as a positive because that's a way that we improve our business. You know, maybe there's things we don't offer that people are like, I wish you offered this. Oh, okay. Well, maybe we can look into that. Let's look at the cost effectiveness of doing that. I mean, you're not going to build everything or provide every service or solution that a customer wants. But I think customers are much more savvy now because of all the information that's around them. Uh, as well as the fact that we're all c- much more connected to each other and can ask questions about, you know, hey, where should I send my kid to take Taekwondo lessons? Uh, that really has, you know, made people a lot more savvy, I think. And uh, we should play into that. And, and also, we should offer things where there is a lot of demand but not a lot of supply. I think it's ridiculous when people come up with ideas to build a business, but there's tons of those businesses that already exist. Why Why do people build those? They should build things where there's actual demand but low supply, because then you're actually fulfilling uh, the market. You're actually providing a service that the market wants. And, uh, and uh, I think uh, we should think about that a little bit more. And a lot of that just comes through listening rather than let me start a business and pile on the advertising and then hope that a bunch of people actually come and support us. It's much uh, easier and more successful if you know that there's a demand uh, for a specific business. You build that, and then word of mouth will pretty much carry you through uh, to success. I love that. That does make sense. Let, let's talk information jamming for a second. I mean, it seems controversial, um, but I know folks are using it. So who's using it? Uh, let me start back. For those who aren't in the know, what is it, then who's using it, and in your estimation, why? Yeah, so it's a, it's a rip on the term culture jamming, and uh, what it really is is you are trying to gain attention by using a – it's almost like news hijacking in some respects. Something happens in the real world, and you try to, um, uh, you know, sort of uh, – carry yourself or, or I should say, um, uh, tack yourself onto that particular uh, discussion so that you can draw attention to yourself. And a lot of this works because of how people get information through news feeds. So if you're a part of that conversation, people might say, wait a minute, you know, what is this company, uh, what do they have to say about this particular issue and, and why? Um, and it, it works for a lot of different uh, businesses and a lot of businesses have used it for the you know the past couple of years because it has been effective. It's gotten them attention, especially if it's contextually relevant uh, to you know to the audience. So like you know what I always tell people is you know let's say you have a situation which you have right now when we're recording this of uh, you know Brazil has like a tainted meat issue and you're a burger place in your neighborhood. Um, You know, you might want to actually, you know, do something where you're like, our meat isn't, you know, tainted because we don't get it from that particular source. That's controversial by nature in terms of what your messaging is, but it's going to get people to actually pay attention because they may see the the news that's happening and then say, oh, wow, that's interesting. And then you basically are gaining attention in in their mind for that short period of time, uh, again, trying to build relevance. So not applicable to every business uh, and has to be, again, contextually relevant and in real time. But if you can use it to your advantage, it really can can really draw 
uh, a lot of dividends for business and, and, and really reward them in, you know, in a fast manner. And, and Jason, we've seen this with bigger companies that have used this where all of a sudden people flood stores and buy whatever the, those products are because they've gained attention and everyone feels like, hey, I actually, you know, need that. Uh, and they sort of rush off and, and buy, um, you know, whatever those products are. So, uh, good, you know, a good measure is uh, in terms of using this is, you know, when you do it, do you actually see an uptick in the amount of searches for your company or your organization or the product or solution you provide? Uh, do you actually see more demand, you know, p things that are actually, you know, traffic or, you know, more sales in that short period of time because of using, you know, information jamming? Wow. Okay. No, I, I, I you know, I've seen that before. <clears throat> I've actually seen it used very, very effectively, um, you know, with, especially in the after school activity world where folks are, you know, there have been not necessarily great things. Usually when a, an after school activity center is in the news, it's not for a good reason. No. So, you know, being able to capitalize on that about our background checking and our, our staff training and our safety measures and all the systems we have in place to ensure that um, does make sense. Yeah, and, uh, you know, we a lot of it is used against competition. So if you are... Uh, one of many players in uh, a specific business area, uh, people like to use it because they like to differentiate themselves from the other uh, companies or services that might provide something similar. Uh, so they're different, you're differentiating yourself in a creative way. And it doesn't always have to be negative. It could be positive and humorous as well. There's a tendency of people to think, you know, information jamming is always like a negative uh, uh, you're using it as negative messaging, but a lot of times people use it in a humorous manner to gain attention so that, uh, uh, you know, they're relevant. We've seen this with, like, lots of uh, organizations, you know, from, like, uh, those who use humor to get people to use uh, storage. Like, if you live in an urban area like New York City, storage is a huge thing that, uh, you know, people need because you might live in a small apartment, but you have to differentiate yourself from all the other sort of storage companies that might exist. Uh, the same thing in, in a lot of the uh, after-school sort of programs that, um, uh, that you mentioned. How do you use humor, especially if parents are the ones seeing that message, so that they actually say, oh, wait a minute, this actually seems like a pretty interesting organization because they have a humorous approach to this. Uh, that made me laugh. I'm going to actually uh, look into what services they provide to see if it's relevant for something that I want to enroll my kids into. Exactly. Exactly. No, this makes sense. All right. Tell me, um, if you're going to look into your crystal ball, um, what kind of emerging trends do you see happening next to marketing? So the big one, you know, that's been out there for a long period of time has obviously been, you know, video marketing or video storytelling around, you know, what your, your, your company or your organization. And it was a very high barrier to entry for a long period of time. It was expensive. You had to get someone to shoot and edit. Uh, then you had to buy media time. And for a long period of time, that was only available on, you know, local cable, uh, especially if you're a local business and you're like, okay, hey, I want, I want to only sell this service to a specific part of New Jersey. You know, you had to buy that through a local cable provider, and it was very costly. Now there's the ability to do targeting through uh, YouTube. So you're buying video pre-roll for your uh, company, and you can actually target it down to a city or street block or a city or a zip code. So no one is seeing it beyond uh, the area that you target. You can also do the th same thing within social media. So you're actually doing paid advertising within a news feed uh, that you're reaching people based on uh, the likes that they have so that you know that they're, they're, you're targeting people that are relevant for your business. And then you can target geographically. So, again, you're, you're, you have a video message that or, a vi or, or, or I should say video content that's not blasting out to all of the United States, especially if 
just you know people within a certain area of New Jersey is who you're trying to reach. That has made local marketing so much more effective, Jason, because micro targeting is just massive. Uh, you can also buy a lot of search ads uh, that uh, you can micro target around specific geographic locations as well on Google or Bing. So there's a, there's the ability now to really hyper focus, focus or micro target, and video content is a really great way to tell your story or at least explain what services you provide. But the most important thing is how you get that distributed to people who are actually relevant, who live within a specific geographic location, who are parents that have kids, who are uh, parents that have kids within a specific age, etc. And a lot of this is because of all the social data that exists on many of these platforms now that we're able to buy advertising against. So it's, uh, it's really changed the game for local marketers who really had to rely on a, you know, very, very expensive initiatives uh, for the last 50 years just to get like a few customers uh, into their uh, uh, sort of lead chain, so to speak. Well, I remember, I remember buying time on the, uh, the local cable channel. Um, yeah. You know, it, just, it was a horrible video. Uh, <laughs> you know, it wasn't like I was hiring um, Francis Ford Coppola to come in and, and produce it. Exactly. <clears throat> so, you know, it was this god-awful video that I was paying through the eyeballs for. Yep. Um, I couldn't hyper-target. So it was just shown at the, like, worst times ever. Um, the frequency was god-awful. So you look at it and you go, oh, well, that doesn't work. Well, actually, no, it does now. Yeah. And, I mean, the, the fact that, you know, you really hit on something where understanding exactly who that ideal avatar is, whether it's a parent of kids between age 4 and 10 who live within a 20-minute drive time of this particular location who probably own a home who are probably somewhere in that seventy to $100,000 medium, um, you know, family or household income, all of a sudden now it's like, oh... Well, that's a real specific group to show that to. That's right. So that's right. The specificity we never had before. Yeah, because you used to have to rely on the you know pray and spray model, which was yeah. you know I'm gonna I'm gonna buy a local TV cable ad, uh, but that might show in 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 not just that local area that you want, but a, a couple of areas that are next to where I am, which again those people aren't relevant. Or I'm going to buy a radio ad, which, um, you know, is also very expensive and may only air uh, past 10 p.m. when no one's listening and may hit a lot of people in a listener area that are not relevant to you because they might be 20 miles away from where your business is. And as we know, you're not going to travel 20 miles to use that service. You want to use something that's within a five-mile radius. And this is where I think, you know, search marketing, social, paid social targeted marketing, and good video content that explains, you know, what your business is and what it offers, you know, has really offered so much to small businesses now uh, that we just didn't have 5, 10, 15, 20 years ago. Well, yeah, I mean, they're totally, there's so many services out there that, you know, create a video for you with little yes. to no expertise necessary. You don't have to learn some crazy package anymore. It's, you know, you can you can look like a rock star, or yep. you can hire somebody and look like a rock star in, in a matter of moments. So that's fact. And a, and a big important thing to note for your listeners is the more user-generated your video looks. So if it looks like it was shot on a phone, it's still decent quality, but the storyline looks like it was shot on a phone and, and, and edited in a sort of quick way, the more that's actually watched by people, Jason. People don't like necessarily scripted ads right. uh, that show up for them. They're, they're, they're okay with that, seeing that on television still. But on, on most of the social platforms, they like things that feel authentic, and they're more likely to actually watch those because it's going to look like a real piece of content when it's aligned with everything else. And again, we're trying to gain attention from the the audience that's important to us. So if we're targeting that to an audience that we know is is important to us, that doesn't necessarily mean they're going to watch it. 
So that's where the creativity aspect is really important in terms of how you showcase your uh, your business. And I, I think like the the, the uh, more real and more authentic your video is, uh, the more it's actually watched by people compared to let's script something out and make it look overtly branded. Right. Well, yeah, it's <laughs> it's got to look real. It's totally got to look real. So <laughs> tell tell me this. Um, Let's talk artificial intelligence for a second. Um, obviously, between voice actions and AI, um, the market ex marketing experience is kind of turning on its head a bit. How, um, how do you see that happening? Yeah, so the thing that's interesting there is, you know, there's three types of artificial intelligence. We have strong AI, applied AI, and uh, cognitive simulation. Strong AI is, is artificial intelligence that's trying to basically get uh, computers to think like we think. That's a very hard thing to do. Applied AI is more of the one that is going to actually affect marketing because that's taking uh, a lot of bit data and crunching that and being able to tell you uh, information that might take you weeks or months on end to go through manually. And this will help businesses figure out, hey, this uh, customer, they come in three times per week. This, uh, you know, and, and here's how they're actually being marketed to. That's how we're going to continue to market to them. This other person looks like they're going to churn, meaning we need to send something out to them to see if we can hold on to them. And if we don't retain them, then we need to let them go. Uh, there's a lot that AI will help in terms of w how you figure out what your next moves are uh, in marketing, and again, as it democratizes, so right now it's you know really only applicable to big companies that can afford it. But as it democratizes, it becomes something that I think uh, small businesses will be able to leverage uh, in ways that they've never you know been able to do in the past. And one area that I think AI has really helped small business is you know in services that uh you know payroll services operational services so to speak i mean nowadays you can get a small business up and running and not worry about a lot of the back end operations because if you use the right services you can automate a lot of that and most of those services use ai mm -hmm. so um you know the things that um we used to that used to prohibit us in the past like oh i have to deal with you know uh, how much my marketing expenditures are per week, but I don't know what I'm getting in terms of ROI. Most of that will be automated through AI in the future, so you know exactly, hey, this is these are the channels that make the most sense for our customers. Let's continue to spend there. And I, and, and I trialed some of these other areas, and that's working too. Let's spend a little bit more there. And this other area that I thought would work is not working whatsoever, so let's you know downgrade uh, what we're spending in that area. Because right now, it's still a crapshoot in terms of, you know, where do you put your money? A lot of it is experimentation. A lot of it is trying to figure out what are the best channel or channels that you can use based on, uh, you know, who your customers are um, and are who you want them to be. And I think another area, too, where AI will help is it will actually tell you through a lot of personalized data and being able to churn through that quickly hey, this is who your customers are, even though you may have thought that they're somebody else. Because right now, you, I mean, we, we still have to draw up personas for who our customers are. Exactly. And that's not always correct because we don't have a lot of information there that I think uh, you know, AI will be able to churn through. So I do think it will help empower a lot of small businesses, especially because small businesses don't have a lot of people to begin with to run them. So AI could act as sort of that... Uh, you know, right-hand uh, person, uh, so to speak, that can help in these areas, uh, you, you know, that now take up a lot of our, our uh, uh, human hours uh, in terms of what we have to do to just sort of make a, a small business operate. Love that. This is, this is so interesting. It's I, I, I got to believe there's somebody out there just like their head is spinning at this point. So <laughs> on, on that note, it's time for a resource of the week. So Jeffrey, tell me this, how can my listeners find out more about you and how you go about helping entrepreneurs to succeed? Yeah. So you can visit my website. It's uh Jeffrey uh, G E O F F R E Y C O L O N.net. Uh, I also am, uh, you know, across, 
social platforms. So if you go to my website, you can sort of figure out uh, what social platforms I'm on, and, and I'm on quite a bit. But uh, you can connect with me on Facebook or Twitter, Instagram, uh, Snapchat. I mean, there's a number of different areas. I uh, produce a lot of videos uh, on my YouTube channel, so if people want uh, to get some ideas on you know, how to use video or how to use audio or a number of other sort of tactics in terms of how they can market themselves. Uh, that's what a lot of my video content is about. And then I have a podcast called Disruptive FM that I host with my uh, good friend Cheryl Metzger, and we talk a lot about uh, business strategy, marketing strategy, and creative ideas. Fabulous. All right, folks. Uh, JeffreyColon.net, G-E-O-F-F-R-E-Y-C-O-L-O-N.net. You gotta head. You gotta get over there right now. Well, finish the podcast first, especially if you're driving. Um, head on over and see what kind of resources. You know, check out. I, I always believe that standing on the shoulders of giants is the way to go. So, if Jeffrey's already gone through, figure this out. Look at what he's doing. Examine it. What can you take away? What can you implement today? All right. All right, Jeffrey, I always like to end my podcast with one, what I consider to be a telling question. So if you could give business owners just one solid piece of advice to either help their business or help them to live a better, more balanced life, what would that piece of advice be? Yeah, don't copy what everybody else is doing. There's a tendency of many of us to want to know what the best practices are. Uh, and then just apply those to our business, not realizing that each business is unique unto itself. It has its own unique customers. It has its own unique um, people that work and run the business. It has its own uh, unique branding. Um, so there's, uh, there, there isn't necessarily the ability to take what others are using and apply it to your business and see the same results. Um, so get, um, you know, get creative in terms of, or inspired in terms of, you know, what's happening out there, but then figure out how you actually mold that to your own business. Uh, I think that will just end up paying dividends, uh, for you because you put your own unique stamp on your marketing rather than just borrowing what, uh, everyone else is doing. Fabulous tips. Fabulous. Jeffrey, thank you so much for joining me today. I know how busy your schedule is, and it means the world to me that you share some of your time and a whole bunch of wisdom with us. This has been fabulous. Thanks, Jason. Ah. All right, folks, that is all the time we've got today. Thanks so much for tuning in to The Real Deal with Jason Silverman. For more info about private coaching or to see if you'd benefit from one of my mastermind groups, visit, visit me over at www.jasonmsilverman.com. I look forward to helping you achieve the success that you truly deserve. Until next time, let me leave you with this. Get out there and be the real deal. Set a goal, make a plan, work like hell towards it, and achieve the success that's waiting for you. Now's the time. Get out there and make it happen. Go get them. This has been Jason Silverman, and I hope you have a spectacular week. You've been listening to The Real Deal with Jason Silverman. To access the great resources mentioned in the show and for information on coaching and mastermind group opportunities with Jason, please visit jasonmsilverman.com.